webinar will run for about 20 minutes and we're going to be looking at best fonts to use in a storybook, sorting out the photos you want to use in your book, choosing a theme and product type, adding your photos to the album, adding text and captions, and adding some fun and colour to your pages. So before we actually get started into showing you how to make one of these books, I thought we could start with a slide showing you some suggested fonts that work well for kids. Um, it's best to use fonts that are easy to read, so not too cursive and with easily recognisable characters. Probably some of the ones on this page are not ideal, but um, there are some really good ones here, such as the Bubblegum Sands, Paprika, they're really nice ones that you can use. Also, it's good to use large sizes um, in your font so that so the kids can manage them. Um, so the examples on this page can all be found on the web. You can go to www.fonts.google.com and you can download them from there. If you're not sure how to download and install them, uh, we did do a video, a webinar on this a while ago. So if you go to the Albumworks YouTube page and look for webinar 31, it shows you how to do it there. All right, so the first thing we want to do when making a book is we want to sort out the photos that we want to use. If, um, it's best to put all the photos you want into one folder so you, that you can find them easily. For a storybook, you probably won't have hundreds of photos, so one folder should be fine. I've done this already, um, so I'm going to show you my, uh, this is in Windows, my um, file explorer, and I've put them all in my pictures folder. I've just created a folder in there called storybook. If I open that, I've just got a few photos in there. I actually just grabbed these photos, so don't, this isn't all particularly one story, but these are just some examples so that I can show you what, what to do. The other thing is, um, if it, it might be useful to number the photos, that the file names, um, as to which pages they're going to go on, and that way you know chronologically what order you need to put your photos in. It may avoid some confusion later on. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's get started making the book. So I'll just uh, close this because we don't need it anymore. And let's go into our editor. So here we are, this is the Albumworks editor and we want to start a new project. Um, the first thing that we want to do is decide what type of book we want to make. Uh, so we have, in terms of the binding, we have classic binding and we have lay flat binding. You can use either, but for storybooks, lay flat books are a really good solution for young hands. They're the strongest binding type we offer. So the pages are actually bonded to each other. So it's very difficult for them to be torn apart. Also, the paper weight is 400 GSM, so it's really heavy. It actually feels like a, a board book, like you'd get in the children's bookshop. You might buy, you know, you've probably seen kids' board books. Uh, so that's not a bad idea. All right, so I'm gonna choose a lay flat book for today. Next, we can choose a theme. There are 16 themes in the download editor to, to choose from. However, for this sort of book, I think it's easiest to keep it simple. And so I'm gonna choose the build your own theme. Uh, that way, so with the pages will be blank, which means I can build build them how I want them. Um, but I still have plenty of page templates, like page styles that we can use um, if we need them. Next, we choose the size of the book and the cover type. Again, it's good to think about who's reading the book. Is it going to be held by small hands? If so, I'd recommend either an eight by six inch book or an eight by eight inch as they'll be easier for a small person to hold and turn the pages. I'd also choose a photo cover so that you can put nice bright photos on the front um, with the name of the book. Today I'm going to choose the 8x8 eight eight square lay flat photo cover so I'll just double click on that one. Um, we then add our photos and to do that just click on the plus sign here and we click on computer because they're stored on my computer and we want to add a folder containing so it brings up a list of all the files on my, sorry, folders on my computer. I know they're in pictures, so we'll click on pictures and it brings up all the directories that I have in pictures. 
here's my storybook folder where I've put my photos. So just click on that and then click select and there's all my photos added for me. I then click next down the bottom and I want to give the project a name. So we'll just call it my story book just for now. You can call it whatever you want and create. And in a moment, the um, editor will come up with my page or pages. Um, and the first thing that I'll show you is just how to add your photos to the page and then we'll look at doing some more interesting things with that. So here we go. Here's my back cover, my front cover. My pictures are down the side, left hand side. I can see my covers pictures down the bottom. So I can just drag and drop photos onto the page um, or I can use these page styles down the bottom of the screen. This photo that I want to use, I know it's actually a landscape photo and my book is square. So it's going to go, it's going to go a little bit onto the back cover. I'm actually going to choose this layout. So I just drag it onto the page like so. And it should appear on the page, <laughs> hopefully. That's thinking, there we go. Um, I'll show you why. So I'm going to drag my photo into here. Now, actually, before we continue, I'm just going to clear the hide non-printable items so that we don't see all that back cover and front cover stuff. It's easier to see our work. Now my photo has been cropped a little bit. I'll show you if I double click on the photo, I can see that some of the top and bottom has been cropped out. So what I want to do is actually make the photo a bit longer so that I don't, and then I'll just double click on it again and bring that out. So I can see pretty much I've got all, all the important parts of our photo now, and that'll sit nicely on that front page. We'll work out the text later. Um, so for, for now, that's I'm happy with that as a cover. Um, I will show you some fun ways to make it better at, a bit later on. Next, we'll move along to pages one and two. So just use your arrow key to get to the next page. Now note that with a lay flat book, page one is on the left hand side and page two is on the right hand side. This is different to our classic binding, which starts on the right. Uh, and so your page one is actually bonded to the inside of the front cover. So as soon as you open the book, page one will be right there on your left. Now, the easiest way to add our photos is, so I'm just going to drag a photo onto the page, but I want it to take up the full page. So if I right click on it and I say fit, fit to page, um, it fits on the page. Now, again, some of it's been cropped out. I'm going to double click to go to the cropping screen. The bit that's highlighted is what I'm seeing. I'm just going to drag it to the right a bit so that we've got everyone in there. Um, and we'll just click OK. And now my people are in there. You do have to think about this a little bit because I've chosen a square book, but my photos are landscape. I am losing a little bit around the edges. So you might want to think about that before you decide which size you want. You, if you've got all landscape photos, you may want to go with the eight by six inch, which is landscape. I will add one more photo just to show you. So I'll add my next picture and again, right click on it, fit, fit to page. Um, and there we go, that's easy enough. <clears throat> um, so the next thing, once you've done that is, and, and look, you can do all your pictures first and then do your text if you want, uh, or you can do your, uh, you can do it whatever order you want. Let's go to page one and we wanna add some text. So to do that, um, we use our text editor on the right hand side and I just have to, move my little thing out of the way, sorry. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is add a text box and see this button here with the T in it and a plus sign, that adds a text box to my page. I can drag it wherever I want, I can make it bigger, so I want it to take up a fair bit of the page. To start putting my text in, I double click. Now over on my right, I can choose my font. So I downloaded that Bubblegum Sans font, which I really like. I'm going to click on that there. I'm going to make it big because I want it to be easy to read. So I'm going to go 48 point font. And then we can just start typing. Um, 
uh, this is my family. Um, uh, um, So you can do whatever you like. I'm just making up a bunch of rubbish here. Um, I might want to make it a bit more centre. You can centre it. You can do whatever you like with it. But there you go. We've got some text on the page. I'll move it down a little bit just to um, – simple as that. So with the storybook, it's nice. You can have a picture on the left. You can have some text on the right. Um, and if you don't like that font, Let's go again. We'll do. I'll show you one more. So we'll just do one more just to demonstrate. This time we'll double click. We're going to use Paprika, which is also a really nice font. If you want something really simple, Poppins is a great one as well. Um, but again, I'll leave the font up to you. And we've just made it a 48 point. I say here are my best friends, uh, Max and Buddy. Um, very simple, and we'll just pop that, I'll center that a bit so that it's easy. There you go, we've added some text. The other thing you can do is actually add captions to the page, and so you might want one of your characters to talk. So to do that, go to our scrapbook items down the bottom. The, there are some tech, um, speech bubbles, and they are under the scrapbooking heading under here. So if I scroll along, it's almost at the end actually. There's some different speech bubbles here. So just for example, I'll add this one to the page for my little friend here. It's a bit big. To make it smaller, hold down your shift key and drag one of the corners in. Holding down the shift means it stays in the same proportions. You don't want to cover his face up too much. Now you can't actually type into that bubble because it's it's a it's an image that so won't let you so we can just add a text box and we'll just make that smaller as well and we'll just pop the text box right on top of the the um speech bubble and then we can just type in there um let's make a bubble we'll make a bubble gum or just for a bit of fun bubble gum sands and we'll make a 14 because or 16 actually might be all right and we'll just type something all right, now it's a bit uncentered, so we'll we can move our text to the middle of the speech box. There you go. Max is saying something. So it's really easy to add some text, and that that adds a bit of fun to the book as well. Um, so that's pretty much. Uh, the other thing, one more thing, I was going to say about text. If you want to use the same font throughout the book and the same size, so to do each of your pages, you can actually save your text style as the default. Double click on your text box and then right click on it and choose use def current style as default text style. That way, every time you add a new text box, it will always be that style and it just makes it easier if you're going to be using it a lot. Okay, let's get to the fun part. So we want to make our pages nice and bright and pretty. Um, the first thing we could do is change the background colour. Let's go to page one again. And down the bottom, we have lots of different backgrounds. So um, we've got kids backgrounds. There's a whole selection in there. You might want to just add something like that or something like that, um, plain simple sort of things. Um, you can also add textured backgrounds, actually the one, the ones I was going to show you, there's a pattern one which is kind of cool that kids might like, it's got this like, kind of star effect through it, that sort of thing might be fun. Um, you don't want to use anything too bright because then it's going to detract from your text. So even like that is not going to work very well because we can't read our text. Uh, so you can also use plain, there's plain colours. If you're going to use a plain colour, choose something light in colour so that your text is readable. If you want to go something dark, then you might want to change your text to a different colour to white. Let's just try this one. That looks quite nice. Um, so there you go, you can change the background. Um, you can also add frames. So here there are a whole lot of frames. Now, 
at the moment my photo is taking up the whole page but I might want to make it smaller so again click on the photo so it's got the blue dots around the edges hold down your shift key and drag one whoops drag one of the corners inwards to make it a bit smaller I don't want to lose too much of dad and then now I could add a frame to it so this baby frame is quite nice oops we don't want to see you go away <laughs> um, that one's quite cute or I like there's a bunch of cute frames and actually called cute these ones here and oh why did that move down okay and oh don't know why it's doing that that's oh, I think because the frames too close to the edge of the page but that's right um, so that's another frame you could use and now my page is looking really nice um, not, it's simple but it's um, interest you know it's a bit of interest in there a lot of color okay so the other thing you can do is add scrapbook items and I'll show you say on this page um, so down the, where we had the scrapbook items and we had our bub speech bubbles there's a whole lot here um, so under kids You've got lollipops and ice creams and all sorts. We've got a little dog and a cat. We might want to just put that in the corner there. Um, I know we're their dogs and not a cat, but you know, you could do something like that. You could also change the colour of your text. So if we double click on our text box, highlight all our text, and over on the right, we can change the colour to orange. Or if you want, let's if we click on that again and choose other. You can actually choose any colour. You can choose any colour from the colour spectrum. We could go purple. Oh, that's not purple. And then choose a darker purple, whatever you want. And click OK. And you've got a purple text box. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do. Um, and it is good fun. I'll show you with the cover. Um, we hadn't really looked at that. Let's add some text in here. So we'll call it our uh, snow trip and we'll just um, move that over a bit so that it's in the center of the page. Um, I haven't got a photo for the back. So you could even put um, at the back um, written by and illustrated by whatever you want. And you can uh, add a background, maybe background might be nice on this one. It's, um, we're sort of outdoorsy, so you could add a nature background and there's quite a few here. There's this one with trees, which is a little bit too busy for me. Uh, there is another one here with a bit, a bit more, um, a bit quieter, but also quite cute. So you could add something to make it a bit more fun. All right, so that's, putting a, a storybook together there's so many choices the most important thing is to be creative and have fun with it if you like what it looks like go for it and even get your young ones to help you if you want that they'd, they'd have a ball with it just don't overcomplicate it if you have too much on the page and if it's you know too busy then it could cause confusion okay there's one more idea that I'd like to show you before finishing up um, when my son was three years old, I decided to make him a book to teach him his ABC. I actually got the idea from one of our customers um, who wanted to do that and I thought it was a fantastic idea and worked wonderfully and my son adored it and put a smile on his face every day. So here's a preview of the book that I made. Now it, was, it wasn't a lay flat book because we didn't do them back then. It's a so I did it as a soft cover which I thought would be easy for him to sort of flip through and I called it Ashley's Alphabet and on the back I just did a little, I grabbed a little photo from the internet, um, make sure it's not copyright and just with the ABC. Then what I did, so my because it's not a lay flat book my first page was on the right and I wanted to have a double page for each letter of the alphabet so I just did an ABC picture here and then on each page I took the letter of the alphabet so I got it a capital A, little small a, and I added photos of any people that he knew, of any family members who started with A, and of course Ashley starts with A. I also popped any of his favourite characters, so Anthony from the Wiggles, Angry Birds, and his favourite food, Artichokes. And 
I mean, very simple. Look, I didn't go to a lot of trouble. I've just put little photos on the page. Um, and then we went to B and we've put Big Bird and Bert and so on and the, our dog Bo, <laughs> various people there. Um, so you can really have fun with that. It's it, it having a book where the kids recognise the people and the, their favourite things will make a huge difference and they'll absolutely love it. All right, that's it for me. Now, if anyone's got any questions, it's a really good time to send them through. Um, I'll just do a quick recap on what we talked about while you're doing that and then I'll have a look at your questions. So with making a storybook, um, plan out what photos you want to use and in what order, um, work out, you know, what's what's the story you're going to be telling and um, have, you know, you can change, chop and change things as you go, but have fun with it. Decide what size and type of book you want to make, that's going to be important. Add your photos to the album, add your text and captions and then go for it. Use lots of backgrounds, frames and scrapbook items to make the book fun and colourful. All right, let's see if we have any questions. So if you just bear with me for one moment. All right, so Maureen has asked if I can tell you uh, how I save the font in the text box. Uh, sorry, I can't see the whole question. Um, so that I can keep it the same. Um, so I'll just go back quickly and show you that again. Oops, oh, yeah. um, all you have to do is you double click onto the text box so that you're in, so your cursor's inside it, right click and then choose use current style as um, default text style and you left click on that. So that's nice and easy. Um, and just a lovely comment from Glenda. Thanks um, for your comment, just saying that it's a great idea. And look, it really is fun and it doesn't have to be your own. If you don't have kids or grandkids, someone you know probably does. Um, great presence um, and a lot of fun. And you, you might even be creative and have your own images and story that you want to tell and you might end up selling it to people. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back to our presentation. Um, so. Um, just before I go, my usual story, uh, don't forget you're welcome to call our customer service team for any help. We're here Monday to Friday, Melbourne time, 9am to 5pm and you can call us on 1300 553 448. Uh, you can also reach us by email, service at albumworks.com.au or live chat with us from our website. 